Hello everyone, welcome to Game Tech UK and this video which is a look at Truck and Logistics Simulator. We're going to be taking a look at it on the PlayStation 5, we're going to touch on the Series X version, we're also going to be looking at the PC version, I might even take a look at old gen PlayStation 4. We're going to talk about the good things, the bad things and I will end with my thoughts about this game. So let's get on with today's video. Let's start by having a look around the game on the PlayStation 5. There's over 30 vehicles in the game, two licensed brands, that's Scania and MAN. The rest are made up of like copycat sort of lookalike cars. So if we start with that, looks like the Audi. We've got a Range Rover and what looks like a Mustang. Over on the bottom right tells you the power and the torque and of course, the price as well. In the pickups, we've got some sort of American brand, maybe a Nissan style four wheel drive. Minivans, I think that looks like a, a Citroen Berlingo, maybe. Uh, Volkswagen Day Camper. Panel vans, Transit. We've got one of the licensed brands there, that's the MAN. Dropside van, that looks like a Volkswagen. That's another one there. And a licensed MAN uh, truck as well. Rigid truck, that's our first licensed Scania. We've got an open top Scania as well for doing the construction work. And an MAN rigid truck. In terms of trucks, we've got a couple of copycat brands. And we've got a Scania there as well. That's the four wheel uh, version. And we've got the six wheeler as well. Um, we've got a MAN four wheeler and a six wheel version there as well. And we've got a very nice American looking truck. In terms of other vehicles, for some reason, we've got a monster truck. The cars aren't only for show in the game, you can still use them, especially early game in your career, to do delivery. So let's have a look at that and also show you a unique selling point of the game. So in this game, you don't only just drive and deliver, you also load as well. And I love this aspect of the game. Here we are using the forklift. We're, the forklift isn't that advanced. There's only up and down on the left analog stick, but that's fine. That's still absolutely, totally fine. And you can see we're loading the trailer here. You need to load your trailer before you can go and deliver it. And I think it's a great aspect of the game. As you put the first load in, the game automatically moves it up and puts the straps on it, so that's fine. You don't need to be too precise on where you drop it. There's also first person for all vehicles as well. The many hours that I've been playing this game, building up for this review, I haven't got bored once with loading up. I think it's a unique part of the game that keeps it fresh and interesting. Once you finish loading, the game will then put you back in your original car. All you need to do is start the engine, reverse up to the trailer, press circle, you're connected, now you can get on your way. There's some really interesting loads in the game as well. Here you can see we're in our sort of Volkswagen style day camper and we're going to pick up this caravan. Not only are we going to pick up the caravan, we're also going to drop it off to a caravan park, keeping that immersion. The variety continues, we've got double trailers in the game. Great addition, I know all players are gonna really enjoy the double trailers. We start up by loading up the free pallets into the rigid truck. Once you've loaded the free pallets and they've adjusted themselves and the straps have gone down, the doors will automatically close. The doors will then open on the trailer, free pallets in there. The game will then transport you to drive the rigid truck. And from there, very similar to what we did in the car, you can start your engine, reverse arm, connect the trailer and away you go. The game continues to give us interesting loads. We've got a vehicle transporter here. We're going to start by lowering that top deck. Then the game's going to spawn us individually into each car to load onto the transporter deck. And of course, once the top deck is full, we're going to raise that top deck, continue to load with more cars until the transporter is full. The game's going to then transport us into the cab. And of course, we've got to just got to reverse up and connect it in the usual way. But what an interesting, fantastic load. And again, I know players are going to really enjoy transporting this around the map. 
you can transport large vehicles and of course you've got to drive that large vehicle onto the trailer yourself and this is a large construction vehicle and it makes it more immersive that you're actually picking it up from a construction site. This is a great addition to the game. Using this machinery and the front loader, we have to load in the rocks manually into the trailer. It tells you how many rocks you need. It can take quite a while. It's quite a finicky process. It's, it's intuitive, but sometimes the rocks don't do exactly what you expect them to do. But yes, once you've loaded in all of your rocks, it will then spawn you into the cab and you can take it from a construction site like this. A very interesting load. Before we take you out onto the road, let's have a look at the options. They are fairly limited. You can change your driver avatar from this menu and you've got things like steering sensitivity. You can adjust the auto center speed. And if you want to, you can invert the lift access when you're using the forklift. You can change the traffic density for both your single player game and multiplayer. You can also change your field of view on the interior view and you can change your seat position as well just to get that seat in position right for each vehicle. We're able to choose to have the camera rotating with the steering. That's a very handy feature. We can disable traffic fines, which I've actually done. Audio volume, music volume, and there's various different languages available too. Given what I've shown you so far, it's coming across like quite an ambitious project. And that's surprising when you see that the main team is just made up of five people. So now we've had a look at some of the cars and some of the loads in the game, it's time to actually get out onto the road, have a look at the map and see how the game plays. I've chosen a fairly short drive. We're going to drive this forklift onto the trailer and transport that trailer across the map. So sit back and relax as I take you on a drive. Before we start, let's go into options, go down to that seat adjustment. Just make sure that the seating position is nice and comfortable and we can see everything we need to see.
Once you arrive at your destination, you just park your load within the green flashing area and you'll get a summary of your base income, your loading bonus, parking bonus, and if you damage the cargo at all. Some of the features that I like in the game, and you may have noticed some of these, is the mirrors work really well, especially the interior mirror. It's really great to see that load behind you. But yes, you can absolutely drive interior cam and use those mirrors to your advantage. You can look left and right using your right analog stick and wherever you are, if you press down on the right analog, it will center the camera. The game has got a dynamic day and night cycle. However, if you go into the options and use left and right on the D-pad, you can change that at any time to be whatever time of the day you wish. If you press triangle, you can have a dynamic time of day. You can set it to your system time, or indeed you can just choose a time of day and have it paused. So far, this has all been PlayStation 5 footage. So now it's time to go over, load up the Xbox Series X version and see what that looks like. Using the forklift, we're going to load the pallets onto the truck and then make our way to the destination.
As you can see, it's looking like the Xbox Series X version is well outperforming the PlayStation 5 version. Admittedly, both versions have a lot of vegetation pop up and tree fade in, and I think that's down to the Unity engine. I'm not sure how much they can get rid of that, but the PlayStation 5 really does suffer at the moment with those frames. I'm told there's a patch coming and optimization is ongoing, but it really is the lesser version at the moment. With that in mind, let's try old gen and the PlayStation 4. This footage is recorded on a PlayStation 4 standard and if you've got a PlayStation 4 standard you know two things. You know how old this machine is and you know the limitations of the machine and this is not going to be the best way to enjoy this game. It's very low frames. I mean I would like to say it's 30 frames but I think it drops way below 30 frames. There's a lot of pop in, a lot of environmental detail has been lost and it's just not going to be a great experience. Saying that, if a PlayStation 4 standard is all you've got, then like I say, you know what you're expecting. The game's still there, the game's enjoyable, but I think performance-wise and visually-wise, it's not going to be your best experience. So, with regards to last gen, I'm putting it forward as a buyer beware. With that in mind, if we look at the PC version, this is running 4K Ultra on a high-end PC, and that pop-up and fade-in still exists. So I think it's a limitation with either the game or the game engine. So the big question is, do I like this game? And the answer is yes, I really do. I like the unique feature of being able to choose any of my vehicles, picking up certain jobs, choosing those jobs, loading up the jobs myself and then driving off. I think it's a real unique feature and I appreciate similar games for introducing that. You know, all these driving games, especially the ones that are coming to console, they've all got these unique features. And I think this is particularly an interesting feature. Another important one for me is the team. Now, as I say, it's a very small team, just five. It's a Turkish team, and we all know Turkish people are lovely, but they listen to constructive feedback, criticism, constructive criticism. They're willing to listen, put new ideas in, and that's a good sign for the future. So if you're going to invest in a game, what's the development team like? You know, Do you trust that they're going to improve it into the future or just release and drop? And I do think there is a future with this development team. Now, I do know that the team aren't working on the console port themselves. That's being dealt with through Aerosoft. They're still involved. They're still managing the project, but that's being done through Aerosoft. And I do wonder, I haven't asked the question, is it the same company that ports their other Unity games to console? Because some of the same performance issues are very, very reminiscent of other games published by Aerosoft. But I know that they are involved. They have got their hands on with the management of the actual console port but they're not doing it themselves. In preparation for this review, I've been grinding out hours on the PlayStation 5 version and I'm not getting bored with the map. There's a lot of locations. You've got the city at night. That looks really good. You've got all the camping and caravan sites. You've got the beaches, the cities, country roads. I think actually the map is really interesting. Another exciting prospect for this game is multiplayer. So we can join 24 people. I mean, even Euro Truck and American Truck in their own convoys within the game are only eight players. So it's very ambitious to be 24. And it's cross-platform as well. PC, Xbox, PlayStation. It's going to be very exciting to try that. And I do wonder how the game is going to behave. Only time will tell with that one. You probably noticed watching the footage yourself that it's not the prettiest game in the world. It's certainly not ugly, but it's not going to win any prizes for its graphics. Typical Unity, really. Sometimes it looks absolutely stunning. Other times it looks really basic. Does it need the best graphics in the world? Don't forget, we're still struggling for that trucking game on console outside of SnowRunner, of course. But that road trucking haulage game, we still haven't got it on console. So if this is the one, I'm willing to accept... Slightly lower quality of graphics, but what I do want them to work on is that pop-up and the fade-in. And I'm just not sure that's going to happen, being that it's the Unity engine. Then we come on to the price. I think it's a fair price. $24.99 in the UK. It's got wheel support on console. All the major brands, Thrustmaster, Logitech, and my Fanatec DD works as well. I think it's a fair price for a fair-sized team. I don't think they've been too greedy. I think $24.99 is absolutely spot-on. 
It just depends on what they're going to do with the game next. The reason I say that is that this is not a new project. It's been out on PC for almost three years. It's been on Switch, I think, for over a year. So they've had a lot of time to sort some of these issues out and to be able to squeeze as much as they possibly can out of the Unity engine. So if they haven't done that already, it does leave a little bit of wondering what they can actually do with this title. Saying that, I have been speaking to the developers and they have got ambitions for having more licensed brands in there, expanding the map, expanding the amount of jobs and vehicles. But as I always say, we have to base it on what's for sale today. We can't build into a product the potential future or what might happen. We have to base it on what's here and now. And there's lots of improvements that they can do in the game for a start, like some kind of home garage where we can display and park all of our fleet, more vehicle customization, making the actual interface more interesting. There is next to nothing on the interface. You're literally going from one job to another. There's no actual progression or XP as such. It's just monetary value and then you buy another truck which is fine but I think it could be done with more class. It can be quite jarring the way the game spawns you from vehicle to vehicle. One minute you'll be in the forklift unloading and just because you're finished all of a sudden it'll just spawn you back into your car which is fine again but I think there could be a better way of doing it. Also the AI is very generic and nothing to write home about. Will pull out on you, will stop in front of you, will crash into you. Also, why not give us the option to unload? I know the features of the game is built around the loading system, but once we get to the destination, why not have an unloading option? It could be for extra XP, money, or an unlockable, and those that prefer that aspect of the gameplay can enjoy it even more. I have got a few concerns over the future of the title, and that revolves around the size of the team versus the ambitions they've got and how much they want to release this over different platforms. Let's have a look at it. PlayStation 4 and Xbox old gen, new gen PlayStation and Xbox, PC, Switch. It's coming to mobile next year. Apparently the mobile version is going to be free. So surely that's going to need monetization somehow. That's going to take focus. That's a lot of patch notes. That's a lot of patches. That's a lot of bugs, a lot of updating on such a small team. That's surely going to spread that focus really thinly. So after playing the game for many hours, putting my thoughts and opinions together in this quite long video, <laughs> do I recommend it? Well, I think for $24.99, you're not going to go far wrong. It's got some unique points. It's interesting. I like the break in between journeys of having to load. I am a little bit disappointed that the PlayStation 5 version doesn't perform as well as the Xbox Series X. Yes, I'm sure it will in a patch or two, but it's a shame that it's not available straight away and I can only review what I've got here. Last gen, buyer beware on that one based on what you've seen. So there you go. I would love to know in the comments section below, what do you think of what you saw? Are you going to pick this up? Are you going to put a little bit of trust back in Aerosoft? Are you going to respect similar games for what they put together? I'd love to know, especially once you've played it as well. Come back, let me know if you agree with my thoughts and opinions. But that is it, everyone. Have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next one.